save trace as, and usually you give it a default name such as background. Remember where you put the file because you will need to recall it later when doing your transmission scan. Save this in the appropriate data directory or wherever you want to keep your final spectrum. Now if we want to run our polystyrene card sample as a reference, insert that into the holder. Return to the grams menu, select collect, instrument setup, and now use the browser screen to select your background file which we had just run and put that in memory. We can now see that we're in the ratio mode for scan type. Gain and time have stayed the same. And now if we click on scan now, we can see a real-time percent T spectrum of our sample as it's being collected. You may also just collect the single beam spectra and do the ratioing within the Grams AI after the data is collected. But this is a convenient feature to allow you to see the actual spectrum as it's being collected. In the auto ratio mode, again, once the single beam spectrum of the sample has been collected, it will automatically reprocess it and display the percent T scan as shown here. Please be aware that if it is necessary to save the single beam raw data files for each sample, you should not use this procedure, but collect the single beams directly and ratio them afterwards. Again, as the process is completed, it will return you to your Grams AI screen, and you can do whatever manipulations you want after the process scan is completed. Save the trace under a specific name, and this way you can retrieve it for future analytical work, library searches, or quantitative analyses. This concludes the basic operator training video. The Buck M500 can also be controlled through the EasyScan fundamental software package included with each instrument. The software must be properly loaded to ensure proper operation and communication with the M500. You will receive two disks for the EasyScan software for the M500 IR system. Insert disk 1 into the drive and run the setup program from the A drive. The software will load several Windows-based files and prompt you for disk 2 after the initial files have been loaded. Depending upon the operating system and the BIOS for your computer, you may be required to copy an INI file to the Windows and EasyScan folder directories. Disk 1 contains a rather large file and it may take a minute or so to properly load it into the system. When prompted, remove disk 1, insert disk 2, and follow the procedures on the screen.
After both discs have loaded the setup files, you will come to the installation screen, make sure no other programs are running in the background, and click OK. Then position the icon and the cursor for installation of the Easy Scan. Select Continue to create an Easy Scan group for your desktop and the system will load and install the files. Due to the nature of certain Windows operating systems, you may find duplicate files being installed. It is recommended you keep the current files or the newer files on your system. After it says the setup was successfully completed, you can click OK, then go to Start, Programs, the EasyScan group, and then copy the EasyScan executable file to the desktop for easy operation. Now there may be a disk 3 included with your software package, again depending upon the version of Windows you have. Insert this into the drive, and using Windows Explorer, copy the buck to your Windows directory and also to the easy scan directory under the program files window. This will ensure proper communication between the M500 and the PC for operation and control. Make sure the M500 is turned on. And then we can begin using the EasyScan software. Buck Scientific cannot be liable for the setup in BIOS configuration of your particular computer unless it is purchased from Buck Scientific. Please make sure that the Buck 500 INI file is copied to the Windows folder and the EasyScan folder for proper communication parameters and operation of the system. The Buck INI file contains the COM port setup which may be changed from COM1 which is the default to COM2 as needed to get proper communication between the instrument and the PC. As with all spectroscopy software, it is necessary to start the day with a fresh background or reference spectrum on either an open path or the sodium chloride or ATR crystal that will be used for your samples. Replace the background with the sample material scan the sample and create your percent T or absorbance spectrum. From that spectrum you can do search, peak pick, or print as desired. Double click on the easy scan icon making sure the data cables are connected to the back of the PC and the instrument. And you'll get the Buck Scientific logo in the Easy Scan screen. You can maximize this as necessary. You can go to Instrument, Scan Mode, and here's where you can change the parameters 
for the setup of the instrument. It is recommended to change the scan type from the default reference, click on change, and set that for the single beam mode. Scan time of three is the usual default. A gain of zero is useful most of the time unless you have an accessory with a tremendous amount of light loss then you could increase to a gain of one by clicking on the up icon. Cancel to exit this screen. We can now go to instrument, scan, and the software shows you the setup screen for the first scan. You can use the default file name of buck 500 or change it to whatever eight character file you want. And it is recommended to put a reference name in the comment screen. And here we're just calling this the air background. We click on OK. The system will initialize itself and begin to collect the single beam data of the air background. When this is finished, we will run a polystyrene card and show how to create the percent transmission spectrum of that sample. When the single beam scan of the background is complete, you can see your profile of energy coming through the system. Take your polystyrene card, Put it in the sample holder, click on instrument, scan, and when the sample ID window comes up, change the file name to buck 501 or another appropriate file name, and put a comment in to identify the sample. Click OK. The system will reset itself. And you will see the single beam spectrum of the polystyrene card being run. With the completed sample single beam spectrum on screen, we can now click on data, ratio background, select the background file name, which is buck 500, our sample file name, which is buck 501, click on OK. And we have our ratio percent transmission scan on screen. We can take advantage of the click and drag zoom feature to expand certain parts of the spectrum. And you have access to an option called the vertical cursor which will allow you to display peaks and get the position